Hi guys, welcome to this video uh, for TechMadeEasy.co.uk. Uh, this is the last part of the little series on uh, how to build a media PC. In the first two parts we've assembled the hardware and then installed the software. So this is just to really show you the end results. So here we are in my living room, you can see you've got a sofa there, TV there with our stereo speakers and our, uh, our amplifier there. And then down here we've got the new Mini ITX Media PC. So what I'm going to do now is I'll mount this uh, camera and then I'll set the system off and you can see how it performs. Cheers! booting up. Obviously that's not Ubuntu. Um, I did decide in the end to use Windows XP with this PC um, basically because there's a couple of other things I want to do with it and I can't do that with Ubuntu. The applications I want to use are Windows applications. But everything that I'll show you here will work exactly the same way uh, on an Ubuntu Linux system as opposed to a Windows system. So Windows is now loaded and we're just waiting for it to load Boxy, which I've set it up to do automatically. And there we go. And now what I'll do is I'm actually sat here using my iPad to control this using the official Boxy app, which is free. So I'll just navigate to my TV shows bring up all the TV shows on my system. Let's go down and watch something. Just pick an episode at random. And there you go. That plays, uh, that file was on my home network. Uh, it's streaming over my wireless network to a little PC underneath my TV. I'm playing on that. I'll show you also the movie library, it works in a very similar way. It picks up all the movies that are on my home network and the locations aren't specified. And then we can just select one and play it. And it starts playing more or less straight away. You get a couple of seconds delay just while it buffers the movie. Stop that. And what I'll show you now is where Boxy really comes into its own with the included apps. So these are my apps, they're the ones that I've specified I want to use. So the first one I want to show you is for Flickr, for those of you that are into your photography and have accounts on Flickr to upload your personal photos. It gives you complete access to all the photos that you have on Flickr. Just select one of these. And these are photos that are on the Tech Made Easy Flickr channel that we use in the Tech Made Easy articles. You can see any of those. Come out of the Flickr app and show you the Shoutcast Radio app, which is an online repository of free uh, internet radio stations. So you can see them all in a list format here, and you can browse by genre or you have a little favourites men menu at the top. So let's pick one of my favourite stations and just see what's on. And that plays live over the internet, just takes a couple of seconds to buffer. Let's come out of the Shoutcast one and show you the YouTube app now, this app isn't perfect yet. Um, there are problems with compatibility on Boxy with Adobe Flash Player, which is what YouTube uses to play videos. Um, now, the interface is, is pretty reasonable. You can see you've got buttons at the top for featured, most viewed, top rated, search, favourites, and any uploads that you've made if you have a YouTube account. So let's have a look at 
Tech Made Easy's videos on YouTube. Again, you can navigate these fine, there's no problems here, but you'll see when we select a video, um, it may not play properly first time anyway, we may only get the top half of the screen. And if we do get the full screen, um, it's not going to appear as well as it would in a web browser on a PC. It's going to look quite uh, pixelated and it's going to be quite laggy. Um, Boxy are working on this, but obviously these things take time. It's not quite there yet, but just to demonstrate, play one of the recent Tech Made Easy videos. The sound is pretty flawless, it's the same as you would get in a web browser, but unfortunately the video quality is not that great. Um, it does give you an option to play back in HD, but even HD videos look pixelated, and you can see from this video that it's very laggy. It's not what you would expect, and it's not what you achieve through um, YouTube on a web browser. So I'll stop that, come out of the YouTube app. And I'll just show you BBC iPlayer for those of you in the UK. Um, much the same. Great interface, very familiar interface for anyone that's used to BBC iPlayer. Let's just have a look and see what's on that's popular. Again, the navigation, very simple, works very well. But when we actually get into the videos, quite pixelated, um, very buggy. And this is all down to Adobe Flash. Uh, the boxy people are working on it but it's going to take some time. We then did a, a slightly more mature older audience, so we did a thing on why beige is the right colour for your car. Uh, I went on a coach tour of North Wales. And then... So you can see, again, audio fine, but picture quality not great, and also very laggy. So we'll come out of iPlayer, hopefully uh, Boxy will resolve these issues soon. Uh, and these are just the applications that I've added to my profile. Uh, on the left hand side here you can select the app library and there are literally hundreds of these apps for Boxy that people have developed for all different things. Uh, different websites have uh, apps, uh, the NBA has one. Um, the um, you can see the Twitter one there, uh, various different ones, all sorts of different genres, all sorts of different interests, definitely something for everyone. And you can just select one of these and you can either just start it if you just want to try it once, you can add it to your wraps, or you can either add a shortcut to pin it to your menu. So you can see I've just pinned the nba.com app there so I can access it direct from my menu along with my TV shows, my apps, my movies, my music, my photos, accessing all the settings and everything like that. So that's Boxy, great free application for browsing your home media libraries, um, especially seeing as you can get the, um, the free Boxy remote control app for iOS devices. Uh, alternatively, you can use a keyboard and mouse, you can use a Windows media remote control, there's so many ways to control this and it really is a good system. Um, it's not quite there yet in some aspects as I've shown you with the YouTube apps and the um, BBC iPlayer apps, but hopefully it'll get there soon and when it does, it really is a complete all-in-one media player solution. Uh, and again, inside all this cost, I think about £155. So you're getting a lot for your money and uh, as you can hear, PC is completely silent as well, there are no fans, so you can enjoy your, your media library without any distractions. That's all for this video guys, thanks for watching.